Hello, this is Edward Lambert at Effective Demand Research. And this is going to be a video about natural interest rates using the monetary model of effective demand. I'll be talking about things such as um, current real interest rate, natural interest rates, Fed rates, inflation, um, negative real interest rates, secular, sec uh, secular stagnation from Larry Summers, things like that. Okay, so this is the model. You'll see there's dials up here that will change factors and these lines will move down here. And so over here we have the interest rates over on the y-axis and production in terms of capacity utilization and labor utilization, employment rate. So I multiply capital utilization by the employment rate to get this total factor utilization rate, the twofer. And uh, capital utilization is uh, the utilization of capital. And the employment rate is simply 1 minus the unemployment rate. So if it's unemployment rate 5%, the employment, the employment rate is 95%. So multiply those together, get a composite value of factor utilization. All right. Let's start out with this horizontal dashed line here. This is the current real interest rate. So if I take the Fed funds rate, which is around 0.25% right now, minus the inflation rate, 1.7%, that's less food and energy, I'll get this current real interest rate. Now, this blue, this purple line, or violet line, whatever you want to call it, this line here would be the nominal Fed rate. So as the economy, as production is moving towards its natural real level here, normally the Fed rate will rise in order to keep control on the economy from overheating. Inflation might rise here if you keep pushing demand, keep pushing production here at the natural GDP level. You can get inflation and so the Fed rate normally rises in order to cut down on investment, control it, and keep the economy from overheating. Now I can actually move this line by changing this position of the, the framework. And then below it is the natural real interest rate. And you can see that I'll be able to change the natural real interest rate according to the analysis. And the natural real interest rate is really the, the nominal Fed rate minus the inflation target. Now why the inflation target? Well the thinking is, is that once you reach the natural real GDP level, the Fed wants to have a certain Fed rate that takes into account its inflation target, say in this case 2%, 2%. So you have the nominal Fed rate minus the 2% inflation target would give you a real interest rate of 1.5%. And at this, at this is what the Fed is shooting for, is really a, a, a real, a natural real interest rate of 1.5%. That's what this model is showing here right now. I could change it. I could say, well, maybe the Fed wants a natural interest rate of 3%. That way they would shoot for uh, a Fed rate of 5%. So if you had a Fed rate, a Fed funds rate of 5%, it would take into account minus 2% inflation at the their target would give you a 3% natural real interest rate. So I can make it go negative. I can make the natural interest rate go negative. So the Fed funds rate could end up at being 1% minus the inflation, if the, if the Fed can maintain the 2% inflation, then once they reach this natural real GDP level, they'll have a 1% Fed rate with a negative real interest rate. And this is what Larry Summers is talking about, uh, secular stagnation. Now, this, this, why is this natural interest rate negative? Well, you can push this natural interest rate negative in order to increase GDP. You just lower the standards. You just, you just by lowering the natural real rate, you encourage business to invest more. You encourage consumption. You're pushing the GDP up. You, you, you want the economy to overheat because you think this level is unsustainable. So in order to sustain it, you have to take a natural real interest rate that's negative in order to push the economy into this um, 
difficult to sustain natural real GDP level. Now, I'm not, I don't really see it that way. If it really is the natural real level, all you need is a positive real interest rate because you will have growth. You will have profits, you will have growth, you will have people wanting to invest more. So you have to raise that limit. Now comparing this natural real rate here with the current real interest rate, this is what Paul Krugman is talking about, is you want this current real interest rate to go below the natural real interest rate. Because once this is below, this is expansionary. This is inflationary. So the model I'm showing right here right now, this blue dot here is current uh, Fed policy at about a 72% twofer. And as you can see, a 0.25%, almost 0% right here, Fed funds rate. And so the current real interest rate is, oh, just a little bit above 1.5%. But you can see that in this current situation, the natural real interest rate is above this current real interest rate. And that's expansionary. People want to invest. People want to cons consume. Now, if inflation goes down, you see this line come up. And so let's take it all the way down to just a little bit of a deflation there. What you now have is that this difference right now between the two lines is very small. You've actually just erased your expansionary effect. So what Paul Krumlin wants is he wants inflation. See, I'm raising inflation up here. As you raise inflation, you're increasing the distance between this natural rate and the current rate of real interest. So he wants inflation. And if they can get inflation all the way up to 3% or more, you see that huge inflationary gap right here? That will push the economy, push, push real GDP up and on. And if the Fed wanted to control that, they could raise the rate. You can see that real, the current real interest rate is starting to rise again. So the Fed is raising the rate to counteract inflation. So they'd have to raise the rate all the way up to 3% or more if it started to get out of, if the uh, inflationary effect started to get out of hand. All right. So I'm going to take the Fed rate back down to where it is. Take the inflation rate back down to where it is, 1.7%. And then from here, this line I'm adding is going to be the natural real interest rate at GDP. Now I am saying here that the natural real GDP level is at about a 73% um, twofer, right? That's what I'm saying according to the constraints of labor share, according to the effect of demand research. Now the previous natural real GDP level used to be over here. And this is where people are thinking that the, the real GDP will, will return to this level. Unemployment will go back to this level. Capacity utilization will go back to this level. And this is where the economy will return to. But I'm saying no because of labor share has fallen. It's actually shifted over here. But let's say that the Fed and Larry Summers and Paul Krugman are still thinking that this is the natural real GDP level. So in order to push the economy to that level, you have to drop this natural real interest rate to be negative. Now, why are you pushing it negative? By pushing this so negative, you're basically telling the market, just borrow money. Everybody just borrow money, start using money, just push money into the economy, start growing the economy, and you can push the, um, the economy, the production, to this previous natural real level. But you have to do that by doing this negative real interest rate by this line curving in right there. And even at uh, a federal funds rate of 
and say an inflation of around 2%, you'll end up pretty close to stability there. The Fed funds rate will probably end up being around 1% or so to try and control inflation. And that will get you back to this previous natural real GDP level. And so they're thinking, okay, it'll take a 1% Fed rate once we reach there and we'll have a negative real interest rate, but at least we'll be able to sustain this level here. And then we'll just try and control inflation as it, as it pops up. Now, this line here that I've drawn in is basically saying, no, look, I'm saying that the natural real GDP rate, according to the labor share constraint, is actually back here. We've actually got a positive real um, natural rate coming up here. The economy will come here, fall into place. So in order to stabilize this point once it reaches, you would have a Fed funds rate of about 3% right there. See that Fed funds rate 3%? That's where this nominal Fed funds rate line is crossing at about 3%. You, you subtract out the 2.1% inflation you have at that point in time. You have your real interest rate at 1%. At Everything's in balance. The economy is at the natural level, and you're in a position where you can control inflation. The thing is, is they are, in their minds, they are still seeing that the economy is going to return to this previous level. And I'm seeing in my mind that the economy is going to be having its natural level here because labor share has fallen. Consumers don't have the liquidity to push GDP beyond that, that limit. So you have to take these, nat these uh, natural real interest rates negative, like this. So this is what Larry Summers must be seeing in his analysis, is that in order to get to this point here, we're going to have to have a natural real interest rate that's negative. And that's going to keep the Fed funds rate at the zero lower bound forever. You can see here that the Fed funds rate is still at almost zero. And this is where he's seeing the, the target. Um, so Larry Summers is seeing that the uh, natural limit would be here with a negative real interest rate. And I'm saying it would be here with a positive natural real interest rate. That's really the difference between what I'm seeing and what he's saying. So he's seeing a secular stagnation by saying that in order to reach this level, secular means long term. He's going to see a long term stagnation in order to keep, in order to reach this point. But I'm saying now, really the economy is going to reach its natural real GDP level here, and they don't see it yet. So that's kind of the, the issue going on there. I'm calling it done.